Link Show. Welcome to the Link Show. Absolutely <laughs> fabulous to have you with us. My name is Dougal, and of course, it wouldn't be a Link Show without Rhoda. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. And Dougal and myself find ourselves in a shocking situation, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> She's referring to all the electrical stuff yes. that it is. But most of all, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you for watching the Link Show, where we bring you all the news, all the knowledge, and of course, uh, the amazing choice that you have when it comes to making North Link your tertiary institution of choice. Now, before we go any further, let me quickly explain to you that this is an interactive show. So we're looking forward to your questions, your comments, and of course, uh, you can uh, send those through to us because we've got some special guests, and rightly, yes. as you have put out, it is, we, we're in <laughs> field, we, we, we're at the campus. Exactly, and it's always so exciting because you know what, actually being in the institution and actually looking at it makes it so real, Dougal. It actually makes it so real that I would want to be here. It makes me very excited. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you where we are now. We, and, 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 and I'm under correction, and I'm sure somebody will correct me. We are in an electrical workshop, and there's no darkness here. Trust me when I say that. <laughs> so this is definitely the future. Trust me when I say that in so many ways. But what the Link Show is all about, as we mentioned to you right on top, of course, uh, this is definitely the show that you want to watch, because here you get all the knowledge and the information on North Link College, which we all know is when it comes to this industry and this specific sector. But more importantly, when you've got to juggle up where you really want to go, trust me, this is the one you want. For and sure. where we find ourselves, we, we yes. sort of nestle between two, uh, where a lot of education takes place in the mother city. A lot, Dougal. And you know, I think for me personally, it's the heart of exactly where it needs to be for our community, for our people, and just so easy to get here. I mean, you know what? exactly the masses out there this is the perfect situation as far as i'm concerned you know what and and what and we're going to find out exactly what happens on uh, this specific campus which is situated in belha but more importantly just to tell you you might have heard it is sort of sandwiched between the university of the western cape and then of course the uh, cput oh, yeah. that is where we find ourselves but when you walk in here there's there's a there's a there's a buzz there's a there's an exciting <laughs> feel is. when you walk in here not just from the people of course working here, the lecturers and all the staff but more importantly from the students so i can tell you the first time i've visited this facility that first i'm time. that i'm here and uh, it is absolutely quite a buzz because engineering is in the heart of all of it and this this includes things from from well from from building to bricklaying exactly. to, to, to plumbing the whole spectrum electrical everything everything and, uh, everything is in it Exactly. And um, you know, that's exactly what we need out there. There's so many students out there. And even, you know what, these guys is actually doing the craft, they're actually working, but they don't have the paperwork or the exact knowledge. They can do the job, but they don't have the paperwork. Yeah. Perfect opportunity to basically come here and get their skills, get their education, get their piece of paper. Yeah. And as you say, this is already a field of interest for oh, so yeah. many. This is already a field of interest. So let's find out all the details and especially around the campus. So uh, our very first guest that we are I'm going to be talking to, of course, is uh, the campus manager here at the Belhar campus. And uh, he'll be joining us, giving us a bit of an overview of the campus, what you can expect, the courses that's available for you. So you can definitely make this your choice as a, your tertiary institution of choice. And trust me, it is absolutely a fabulous place. So Mr. Lawrence, hello. Thank you so much for coming on to the Link Show. Thanks for being here. And let me just firstly say, what an amazing campus. Oh, yeah. Definitely, uh, to go. this is one of the better campuses of Dortling. We <laughs> specialize in all construction-related training, and we offer that on a morning-afternoon basis, as well as, you know, weekend basis. So there is opportunities for those that are working to come and study here at Dortling. Yeah. And, and just to be clear, so, I mean, your, your title would be campus manager. That, that is now AKA principal. That's correct. Uh, on this specific campus, I need to manage all operational activities. That is including the academic as well as brick and mortar uh, yeah. items. I need to manage the finances on this specific campus and the administration. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things that I saw, uh, Mr. Lawrence, is the fact that the staff, I saw there was a, quite a bit of female staff in the engineering section. I, I, I must comment and I must compliment you on that. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, the world has changed quite a bit. Uh, we, there's quite a number of females that is now taken into this industry, in, especially in engineering. Mm. And we have a 50-50 oh, wow. split of students coming into this uh, engineering training. 
and we are excited about that. Excellent. We have also qualified lecturers and facilitators that is currently offering training in the various disciplines. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, so I so that it. is quite something because mm. I knew Rhoda was going to jump oh, yeah. at that sort of question because, <laughs> I mean, you specialize in engineering. So this is yes. now everything for, just for layman terms, we're mm. talking now, let's say construction here. Yes. Because we're talking bricklaying, we're talking... Exactly. Uh, everything that's got to do with that. So everything then from onwards there, from carpentry, plumbing, mm -hmm. the electrical makeup of, let's say, uh, a building that you would have. This is, and it is interesting you hear, to, mm. to hear you say that it is basically a 50-50 split. Yes. Because normally, I mean, this is a very male-dominated industry, but walking in here, there mm. is, I mean, y you, can, you can physically see it. Yeah, you can almost see that there's more female students than male students. Mm -hmm. And this used to be a previously dominated male environment. Mm -hmm. so and true. now we're having females coming in here and they're actually doing a better job. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the campus quickly. When it comes to uh, any campus, I mean, uh, the, the big thing that mom and dad is a is prospective oh, yeah. student pondering now is accreditation. Correct. We are accredited with all the uh, educational bodies, uh, the QCTO, which is the Quality Council for Trade and Occupations. We are accredited with the National Artists and Moderating Body, which is NAM. We are accredited with various CETAs, and they come regularly doing their monitoring and evaluation inspections here on campus. Okay. Beautiful. And. Um, I heard something, and I, was, I know it's a bit of a <laughs> highlight, but there, there was a sort of a world competition, something that happened in the Middle East or something like that. I, I, I heard a birdie. I heard a birdie. <laughs> yes. We had a competitor, uh, Mishle Mbulukaki, uh, and he currently is employed at another institution. Uh, he uh, completed in Brick Lane, mm -hmm. and uh, he was one of the many students that came through the training year by us and then he was selected after competition internal and external competition to be selecting South, uh, or representing south africa in, at the world skills in abu dhabi wow brilliant wow and then i just have to ask you also so obviously i mean i'm just looking around so the programs is in line basically with the industry out there as well what is needed out there very much so. Uh, we cannot deliver any training that is not industry mm. related. So we are currently training and delivering for the manufacturing industry, mm. the automotive industry, oh, wow. the oceans economy industry. We also training for various entities called South African Defence Force, mm. National Defence Force. We are also training for the Department of Health. We are doing so many different training initiatives and that is all to equip a skilled workforce for South Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so you've got all of these sort of sectors that sort of intertwine and uh, because a lot of people are, that, that, that is a key question for any prospective student. Yes, okay, I've got mm -hmm. my paper, I've got my <laughs> certification, but yeah. you know, finding employment. That, that is always the, 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 the big thing. But, I mean, just looking around us where we are now, I mean, this is, this is mm. as practical as practically gets. You know? <laughs> of course, of Hands course. On. And uh, the opportunities we also provide to students is, for example, entrepreneurship. Because they need to be, mm. at the end of the day, self-employed if there's no employment, formal True. employment out, mm. out in the industry. Yeah. And let me ask you this, because this is a very important question, because where the world is going, where the oh, country yeah. is going, the economies of the world is going. And we all hear it, it's almost like a buzzword, the fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> we, we're constantly hearing it. Exactly. And you, you've just said now, you sort of keep up with that. Now something as big as that, and especially the advancement of technologies, because it's happening by the second. Correct. Um, are you keeping up with that in terms of? Yeah, so much so that we, in essence, has invested uh, almost 10 million rand uh, to upgrade this very center that we are currently sitting in uh, to four IR standards. And we do uh, involve industries so mm -hmm. that they can guide us on what is required so that we can implement that. So that this product of student that will, that will leave Northlink will be employable, 
He can also, uh, that person can also be an uh, entrepreneur and work on his own or earn a business or have a yeah. business. So that is all what we're planning to do here. Wow. So let me get this in a nutshell. And, and you've got to listen to this now. So you've consulted with the industry out there, different sectors. These are the needs, the requirements that you would like to have in a dream ideal world from yeah. students. And you are implementing these sort of steps here. Correct. Oh, wow. Quite correct. And <laughs> we are proud to say that coming 2023, we will open this new four-hour center. And you're welcome to come and see what we have on display. Yeah, because oh, I've, heard, I've heard terms like a cobot. Have you heard of this, Rhoda? I, I kind of read about it. I was like, what is cobot? A collaborative yeah. robot. Wow. Yes. Basically what I am to Rhoda. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's what it is. That is what it is. So all these sort of things will be happening here because I know prospective students are looking at this going, yeah. because this is where the new advancements are. This is where the big interest is lying. That's quite correct. And I mean, the majority of industries nowadays have 4IR as at their disposal. Mm. Mm, sure, sure. So just where it is going, I mean, oh, wow. it, it, it covers so much. You, your virtual reality, it's, it's just... It's a lot. Uh, it covers so much. And I know a lot of people have, uh, have a keen interest in this. And uh, this is just absolutely groundbreaking. And, and I think what I'm loving about it as well, Dougal, is the fact that, you know what, when you're leaving here, it is basically, you're walking, you walk into a job quite easily because this is exactly what the companies are looking for. And this is why they're giving information saying, we want this or these stuff, please give these courses. Yeah. So you know what, you kind of guaranteed that you would walk out of here and like you said, being an entrepreneur, being able to have a skill that you can start your own business as well. Definitely. Yes, and what we're training here, uh, if the student has been trained here, he will go into industry and he can apply that immediately oh, wow. in industry. Oh. And this is this is I one of the it. things, and uh, I know we know we're the presenter of the show, but, <laughs> but, but let's be honest, this is what makes Northlink students so desirable to different sectors. Yes, sought exactly. after students because they are equipped to be able to, to deliver in the world of work. Yeah, yeah, you can you can basically start off on a run already, <laughs> right already, which is what it is. But that definitely sounds very exciting because there's so much that, that will be covered. I mean, we're talking automation here, like the cobots that I mentioned, 3D, 4D printing. There's really oh, yeah. a vast array of things that will be covered here with us. And I know a lot of people are watching this going, now. Nah, I've got that sort of interest in it. And let me just remind you, it is an interactive show, so we're looking forward to your questions or comments. With us, of course, Pat Lawrence, who is the campus manager here at the Belhar campus, and uh, this is where we broadcasting live from today right here in Belhar which is and it's absolutely an amazing facility that specializes in uh, various forms of uh, engineering of course from bricklaying to to plumbing and I'm, 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 I'm even looking forward to talking about that because that is quite <laughs> insightful it, is, it, it, it really 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 is let, let me ask you this in terms of the facilities of what it is safety is always first Mm. Definitely, we need to adhere to all the safety regulations. We ensure that the workshop are equipped with the necessary signage. Uh, all the necessary protocols needs to be maintained. And uh, we do have regular inspections uh, regarding the occupational health and safety. And then that is something that's constantly okay. ongoing as well. Constantly ongoing and making sure that we comply. Yeah, mm. because where I'm sitting, I mean, uh, you mentioned signs, you, you see, I know everywhere you see is hard hats and safety boots safety and boots. I see first aid kits basically every, <laughs> <laughs> every meter uh, uh, from, from us. So uh, all, 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 of, all of these things are obviously well adhered to. So you can, you always, and, and, and on that question as well, because mom and dad would want to know this as well. I mean, the staff and the facilitators, they're well trained in administering mm. sort of first aid and seeing two things. Yes, they qualified uh, facilitators, qualified lecturers, and we make sure that where we need to upskill, we upskill them so that they can deliver to the best of their abilities. Oh, no, that's exciting. Rhoda's got another question there. For that's you, right. I just want to find out because I kind of read also and I heard that the N1 and the N3 is going to be terminated. Am I correct? Yes, you're quite correct, uh, okay. but we do have replacement programs for that okay. and that it will be the centers of specialization for plumbing for bricklaying for oh, carpentry wow. and for the electricians oh, so wow. those students can then indent into an apprenticeship mm. being paid a stipend 
and then they can be employable immediately with a specific company. Ah. Wow. So that is the new way going forward where it will be an integrated mm. training, meaning that theory and practical will happen together. Oh, wow. wow. The that student will also spend time at the institution, but also spend time in industry so that they can be equipped to be employable almost immediately. Exactly. And, and when we talk center specialization, this is what commonly is known as COS. Yes, this is what yes, people are correct. referring to. <laughs> but in the old days, it used to be called an apprenticeship. Oh. And this is exactly the same uh, model of training which we've done way back, which we are now bringing back. And I tell you, that will also ensure that there is employment and mm. students are equipped. Yeah. Mm. And uh, implementation, when this, when this is happening, more or less? We are already currently busy with the electrician center specialization. 2023, we will obviously implement uh, the okay. three new trades, which is the bricklaying, carpentry, and uh, plumbing, mm. as well as Mulright, which is a combination of electrical and mechanical training, and that will oh, combine wow. across Wingfield and Bella Campus. Oh, wow. You see, Rhoda, I knew, I knew that. I knew what Mulright was. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say no. <laughs> yeah, and I absolutely know this. So going forward, there's, there's quite a bit of oh, exciting, exciting things wow. happening. Yes, definitely. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to, uh, with the partnerships with our stakeholders outside, mm. our companies. And uh, they have signed up already. They have shown the expression of, of interest to be part of the Centers of Specialization. And uh, we're ready to sign up those new apprentices so that they can start in 2023. Oh, yeah. exciting. Oh, and it sounds definitely exciting. Is there anything you would like to add, Mr. Lawrence? Anything in terms of uh, closing words that you would like to add? Yes, we're looking forward to the new applications uh, for 2023. Please uh, come and, and sign up now already so that you can have a place. Mm -hmm. There is a place for many students here at Northlink and we welcome you to come and join us. Ah, absolutely Beautiful. brilliant. We don't want to keep you much longer. We know you're very, very busy, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you for giving us an overview and, and really some insight in, in what takes place here. It's an absolute pleasure talking to you and uh, from us and uh, mm. just on behalf of the people watching this, let me just say congratulations oh, and well yeah. done. Well this done. is an amazing, absolutely, I actually feel quite electric. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very so much. Many ways, uh, in so many ways. Thanks and to all viewers. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, that is the campus manager here at uh, the Bellhaw campus, of course, uh, Mr. Pat Lawrence. Now, uh, Rhoda, there, there's, uh, there, there's a lot to, to talk about because we're going to move on and we're going to cover various aspects. And of course, with all the amazing uh, courses that is, that is available here and uh, all all of this that uh, that uh, you could participate in which is of course absolutely fantastic so you don't want to miss out of that we've got more guests that we're going to introduce you to <laughs> as well and uh, let's do that uh, right now because uh, joining us now two gentlemen and uh, immediately closest to my side is uh, Moses Klainsmith and Mofotsi Mokateri who has joined us here and they both here at the Bellhaw campus. Gents thank you so Welcome. much for your time. <laughs> Welcome to the link show. Where to start because we've just had the principal on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of gave us a really big big over Overview, and we're going to talk electrical department. Firstly, yes. I didn't want to ask him that, but where, where exactly are we in this room? What happens here in this room where we are now? Okay, in this room we start with phase one. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the beginning of your apprenticeship. All right. Uh, from here we move, when the students come in the first time, we will start with them in a classroom. We will sit down and we will do the theoretical base okay that includes a tour of the campus and then secondly we will give them a preview of what is required from them through the course okay the second uh, portion of the course is going to be the introduction and then after the introduction we will start with the safety all right and after the safety, we will take them through the tour again in the classroom or the workshop where they're going to work, point out the various machines that they're going to work with, and then, of course, who is the first person that's in charge of that workshop, and then we'll take them back to the classroom 
and we will start with the theory on uh, the Bosch Act. Okay, that, that sounds complicated. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm sure it's not as complicated. No, as it's not so complicated. Yeah. We, we tried to give them an overview of the, what the safety and the OSIC is all about. Okay. And to make them free, free to come to us if there's any problems when it comes to the safety. Mm. Anybody, anybody that gets hurt mm. in the mission where they pursue it or the task, um, they must be free to come to us and show us mm. a bruise, mm. a cut, or so on. Yeah. Then they were provided with a full gear of uh, protective clothing mm. uh, that is uh, gloves, safety goggles, and of course, a complete overall and safety boots. Because uh, wow. let me, I actually uh, uh, jump in here. Sorry, um, because I saw that, I saw that. I thought mm. to myself, every single student, well, not just every student, all the facilitators and the lecturers, everybody here has got a coat on of sorts, <laughs> uh, like yourself right now. Everybody's wearing their safety uh, shoes, shoes yeah. and, and, and it's very, 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 very safety. And 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 the thing is, which is most mostly clear, students will receive these items. They receive these yeah. items. Yes. Okay. And I think that is absolutely key. That is absolutely key to know. Now, uh, Mohoti, let's get you in here quickly. I mean, we, we're getting a sense of the electrical department. Yes. Oh, yeah. So give us, give us the, the other bits of the overview in terms of the department. So uh, the department uh, is mainly uh, created for heavy current electrical. Mm -hmm. And within the department as well, we're also offering uh, solar PV and thermal. Oh, wow. And included with that, we have a small component of the mechatronics program which we share with our different campus and the Wingfield campus. So within mechatronics, uh, it's split between different multidisciplinaries within engineering. So Bella will cover certain aspects of it, and then Wingfield will cover the different aspects of it. And then also included with that is a small short courses on PLCs. So within the department, there's very dynamic training happening throughout. So you'll have your full uh, apprenticeship uh, candidates who are doing the phase one, two, three, heavy mm. current. You'll have students coming in for short courses on uh, maybe PLCs, and also students who come in for uh, mechatronics for their segment of the component within the program that we'll have to do here at the campus. And uh, most of those candidates ideally vary between uh, students who came straight out of high school mm. for the um, apprenticeship. There'll be candidates who are coming in from companies for upscaling, yeah. and then there'll also be candidates who come in just for short components of training segments um, just to upskill themselves and make themselves employable for different aspects in the work field. So when, when we look at students that, that are within the electrical department, so you look at what, what kind of age groups are you looking at now, considering yeah. what you've just said? Yeah. So you can imagine yeah. the age group varies. So there'll be anything from uh, anyone from your 17-year-old uh, who just come out of high school, high school. with grade nine, and there'll be maybe someone that is uh, <laughs> Mr. Clayton with, um, <laughs> <laughs> with or that's been in the field for many years, you know, <laughs> and they just want to upskill themselves and or maybe also get recognition of prior learning for their work they've been doing within the field. Mm -hmm. So exactly. also offer a uh, recognition of prior learning for electrical on campus. Um, wow. So you can imagine the classrooms are very dynamic, all different age groups, and that also requires your facilitators to be very dynamic in the approach. Mm. You know, because you're having an array of students in the workshop with you, so meaning your approach to each and every one is different. You know, okay. you can approach uh, Mr. Clay Smith the world, yeah. the same way you'd approach myself, and say. the same way you'd approach a <laughs> 17 year old in the workshop. So it's very dynamic training environment. And, yeah. and then I just wanted to find out as well, because earlier before we were basically, before the show started, I saw some ladies all around and they're fidgeting and they're busy with these boards here at the back. I was fascinated, obviously. I was scared of the board because I am just a shock freak. I can't go outside when the thunder and lightning is hitting. So, you know what, I was in place. There is more ladies, obviously, that's sticking on this task as well. Yes, um, the dynamics are changing. So I was going to say. Women, women empowerment <laughs> is everywhere. Um, <laughs> I'll give you a simple scenario. Recently, we had a new uh, program we're running, enrollment for uh, heavy current electrical. It's a full three-year apprenticeship. So we open up the applications, and uh, as the applications were coming in, we do a continuous review of the applications. So once mm. they closed and I had a full review, 70% of the applicants oh. were female. Yes. And all those females qualified, they met the requirements oh, for the wow. program. Mm. And this is actually Mr. Clayton's group. I think yes. you have uh, 60% now within the group that's female. Yes, that's wow. all female. Yeah. Yeah. That's all yeah. female. Yeah. And, and let, let's talk about that. So the, the, the stuff that is discussed in class, yes. what, what happens? I mean, this is very, I mean in, in what you're studying here, this is very hands-on. Mm. Yes. Look, the, 
we do the theoretical part, theoretical part first uh, to give them the knowledge, what they require. Each one will give a handbook, and from the handbook we work mm. to the theoretical. Then from the theoretical part, we'll come to the workshop. You'll also notice um, for safety, mm. um, each um, station, above the station is a red knob that will have a padlock on. Mm. So the student can't switch on. Oh. The facilitator must be present. Um, then we will come to the workshop and we'll start doing the practical. We attach the theory to the practical mm. so that they can understand. So if the one person that doesn't, doesn't understand, we take them back to the, to the mm. uh, classroom and we'll go over that. Or sometimes you'll see these boards, um, whiteboards in the workshop. We will just get, gather everybody there and we will discuss it quickly. Yeah. Mm. And then they will go back to their panels okay. to work and to wire. So now let's get straight into this because this is something that happens. Because the first thing is once a student declares, this is what I want to study, yeah. the mom and dad needs a bit of clarity, yeah. right? Exactly. So people who possibly want to be electricians will be ending up here. And I'm also asking on the sake of my grandparents who never knew what anybody studied because, the, you know, you just study something and nobody knows what you're going to do. Mm. But now we've just heard uh, from Mr. Lawrence as well, COS, and this is not the yeah. buzzword. The, the center of specialization. Yeah. This this is super important because this happens here and now. Yes. Mm. So give me the meat on the bone for what that is. Okay, since uh, the COS means uh, center of specialization, at where the requirement is that we have the student, mm. we have um, the employee, and then we also have the college. Okay. Those three parties plays a very important role on behalf of that student. The student can have a grade seven, oh, all right? Wow. Mm. Um, because one in one and two is not longer be in our presence, yes. so mm. we can start from there. Um. So what we do, we start exactly the same thing as in the phases. So let me just, uh, sorry, just to cut you. It is just basically the N1 and N3. Yes. Though it's, this has been a name change. That's correct. Yeah. It's a name change. Yes. Mm. Same thing. So it's going to be, um, Theory, base, then the practical, and then the work modules that they must do. Each student will get a logbook mm -hmm. that is signed with himself and the facilitator in the workshop, and then he get a special um, logbook that he must take with. So if he's been placed in all in any in industry, he will his uh, journeyman will indicate on that logbook what he completed. Okay. So each time when he go away, after 12 weeks, that's mm -hmm. he's with us, he will take that logbook with, he comes back, we will check that logbook against our logbook. Mm -hmm. And then he will do another 12 weeks full time. He will then be placed back into his workplace. And then, so it's all about the theory, practical, and of course the work. Yeah, yeah. So this is where the, the three, the company comes in basically. Yes. So this is listed companies that has been um, linked to you that said, okay, we're giving you this opportunity and yes. you know, we want to actually put forward and link up with Northling um, yes. for that. Okay. Not only, only companies that we are linked up with, but we get also requests from other companies oh, wow. that uh, wants to become partners oh, wow. in training. Yeah. Uh, we must not forget um, there's money in training. Definitely. I'm paying, uh, the company pays a levy mm. Mm. towards the fund. So if he doesn't use that levy mm. for training, he loses it. Oh, yeah, true. So I say company A sees the advantage of it, he goes for it. Oh. Mm. And everybody, any company that opens these days must sign on on the levy structure yeah. for training yeah. and training. advance people. Yeah. Excellent. But so this is super important because uh, what it really boils down to is when you when you when you bring it down to what your tertiary institution of choice is. I mean, Northing comes out on top and, and so and so many facets, which is uh, which is uh, just uh, uh, brilliant. So that is the electrical side of things. Yes. and I want to move on to to building and civil building because and this is yeah. and, and just before we get to that. 
In terms of the makeup of the student population here, are there more students within the electrical side of things than, let's say, building or civil side of things, or is it really an even I'd, split? I'd say it varies, um, but the biggest trades on campus would be the electrical and the plumbing, and plumbing is within building and civil. Ah. Oh, also wow. within the, the space allocation of the programs, uh, plumbing and electrical will get the bigger space allocations for, for the training spaces required. So those two are big top trades on campus. Um, but also within that, under building and civil, we have five trades there, okay. uh, which are namely uh, the plumbing, top number one. Uh, I'm not being biased though. Uh, <laughs> there's also carpentry, uh, joiner and machinist, uh, painting, and bricklaying. So those are the five trades within brick, uh, building uh -huh. and civil. Uh -huh. All these five trades we are accredited for, as well as skills uh, development providers and as well as trade test centers. So ideally from walk-in, after your application, I want to become a plumber, we'll take you all the way through the phase uh -huh. training, support you while you're in work placement until you come back for your trade test. So when you leave here, you'll be a qualified plumber. And that works the same throughout all the trades on campus. And then that is likewise then for bricklaying? For bricklaying, for painting, for carpentry, and joiner with machines. That's, exactly. You make it sound so easy, ah. but it is it is definitely brilliant because uh, and, and and there we can see everything. I mean, all the the, the, the fine uh, we, on, on the screen right yeah. now, we, we've got it playing yeah. where, oh, where you see all of that that see, sort of happening in terms of bricklaying you know, and plumbing, plumbing and, and, all exactly. and, and all of that happening because. On, on the way in, I actually saw these like half structures, and I was thinking to myself, you yeah. knock them down and you start <laughs> again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw all these half walls. <laughs> I just want to find out. I believe there is current projects running with the department as well. Yes. Yeah. So um, there's plus minus six to ten projects running uh, wow. separately within the campus. Um, each project project will have its different trade assigned to it, and there'll be different deliverables in terms of number of students and the output of those students. For example, Mr. Clean Smith has a group of uh, students funded by the National Skills Fund, which oh, wow. is the 15 electricians we spoke about. Um, uh, within the plumbing uh, section, we have students from uh, um, the city of Cape Town who are coming for the trade tests. Uh, uh, we've got students who are within our bricklaying, our mm. painting, and our carpentry department. They are all from or funded by AXA, the oh, okay. most company in South Africa. Um, that's a project where um, AXA is developing the communities around the area of the airport mm. uh, to help uh, facilitate training to the community so they can upskill themselves so they can better their prospects of employment going forth. So yeah. there's many different uh, projects running through the campus. Um, there's a few CETA funded uh, projects from the sector education training authorities. Wow. Um, so it's, it's a very dynamic space that we're in. Mm. So every group, I'm very impressed. every morning when I walk into the workshop, uh, we've got a little mezzanine floor. Yeah. And you can look down and see all the different overall colors and oh. all the different companies showing all the different projects that are within the workshop. <laughs> So it's quite lovely. Dynamic. No, it is, and it, it definitely sounds exciting, you know. And, and uh, the one thing that is super important, and, and and I want the viewers to understand this as well. Why are you designing this? This is th this is the building blocks. This mm. is the foundation for any great economy, for any country, for any society, for any civilization. Really, these are the hardcore skills. These these are the essence. This is the essence, Aruga. Totally, totally. Th I this agree. is this is this is it. <laughs> so a lot of people are wondering now. So you have all of this within terms of soul. So that includes power plumbing, the, the carpentry, you obviously got the electrical side, you've got the brick lane side, all of this is here. How do I apply? When do when do open out? How do I go about it? I want to be here. Get me here. How do Get I do here. that? <laughs> Please come here. <laughs> Point number one, you can come and visit the campus at any time. Um, come and inquire. We are always open to give uh, mini tours of the campus. Oh, so lovely. in some cases, a student can come in and say, I'm, I'm interested in one of the trades. Um, but then I'll take them around so you can see the full scope of programs we're offering. Mm. And then sometimes the decision changes, sometimes <laughs> it's enforced. <laughs> <laughs> and also our online applications are open um, uh, so you can apply also online at www.mosting.co.za there's a link on there mm -hmm. uh, you can upload your documents as well on there that link comes to me so then yeah. I can review it and then the can do the relevant selections with <laughs> my panel of our facilitators mm -hmm. and uh, yes some cases we uh, on the special projects that we run if um, there's also opportunities available there, we'll then put notifications out, adverts out for students to come and apply for those projects. So they can. So there's, there's many different avenues available. And then funding-wise, 
uh, some projects are fully funded. Oh, wow. And also um, uh, the NSFAS is also available for funding. Mm. And uh, within the COS, uh, funding sometimes comes through from the external companies. Okay. So a student might end up uh, seeing an advert from a company from an apprenticeship. Mm. So you apply with the company and they'll send you to North for the training. Oh, all right, wow. so all those avenues are coming to me. So one easy way to do it, I mean, it can contact you, Easiest you can get a sort of tour. Yes. Other one is to, to do it online, online. as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to be clear, um, for, for the courses on offer, uh, you said earlier, for, uh, but that would have been within the industry from, let's say, grade seven. But ideally, um, what, what qualification are we looking at so here, as, for, as far as schooling is concerned? Yeah. So ideally, your grade nine, and then uh, your certified ID and certified uh, proof of residence. Uh, you can through your documentation or do an application form and take you through this process. So I did the grade nine is the minimum requirement and you level two. Yeah. I'm, I'm all Sorry, questioned out. Unfortunately, we, we also need to bank in the Yeah, that is when we pay in the, 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 um, the stipends the, the for, the the for them now. Okay, yeah. okay. And that is very important. News. That's yeah. good news, yeah. guys. Finding available. Yeah. It's finding available. Go for it. <laughs> Gents, any final things that, uh, that we might have missed? Any student watching us right now going, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. Why, why must they come? Clearly, everything you've said is brilliant. What else is there that we could say? Uh, well, I will conclude um, all electrical departments or students, their final aim is to complete their treaties. That is the final stage in the trade. <coughs> this is where, where we will combine all the training that they've done, all prior learning training, and we will put them into a situation for two days where will they do a written test, and of course they do, will, will do a practical assessment. After that, if they pass it, they will get three chances to complete it. If they fail, they need to come back. And because of the failure, if they fail one task, they will only do that task over. Okay. If okay. they fail all the tasks, they must do everything over. All right. Then after that, they must do their code of practice. It is a code that we unfortunately must do. Mm. It is uh, according to the SAPS, um, SANS, we must do that code, and that's the theory side. That's contain all the laws, if you want to go on your own one day, and then you must do, after you've passed all two, your traitors, your code of practice, you must then do an assessment. Mm. That assessment is a full week, where they will go into depth with the object and safety. Yeah. Wow. And of course, the COC that everybody knows, a certificate of compliance. Mm. After those three have been uh, completed and successfully completed, they will get a form to fill in, send it to the Department of Labor, and they will provide you with a license. Not a license to kill, a license <laughs> to work. <laughs> <laughs> in order for you to so do that is you a, that, that is uh, the final, uh, and everybody's aim is to get to the all trades. So oh, to get yeah. to the trade test. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much thank for you. enlightening us in so many Definitely. ways. Yeah, thank, you. thank you so much for, for coming on uh, the Link Show, and we wish you all the best, best. and uh, good luck with all the students. And uh, fingers crossed for all the trade tests and everything else. But thank you so much. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. Okay. And well done on the amazing work you do here as okay. well, which is just absolutely fabulous. Well, so there you heard it now, and uh, this, this is what it's all about here. It is it is really a hive of activity, it must be said. And I wanted to remind you just one very important part is to like, of course, this video and share this as well. And it is interactive, so we look forward to, to your questions and comments. So we've, we're at the Bellhaw campus. We, are, we have touched base now with some of the electrical things. We've got a big, big overview on all of that real nitty-gritty as, well, as well as when it comes to, you know, building and so. But there are other skills involved and the ones that might not be so prominent in your 
hands and in your head. And I purposefully <laughs> use that word right now because uh, F Farid uh, Bayadin is uh, joining us and we're talking hand skills. Firstly, hand thank skills. you so much for, for coming, for, for being here, uh, being on thank the show. How are you doing? Thank you very much for having me. Um, very well, thank you. Absolutely awesome. I must say, the man with the best haircut here on the show <laughs> has finally joined us. Now, when it comes to hand skills, what, what are we talking yes, about here? I've never heard this, this sort, of, sort of term because this is something that, that encumbers sort of everything. It goes through everything because it is super important, but also when it comes to electrical. Yes, correct. 100%. Mm. That's, uh, as an electrician, you need to have a lot of skills. Uh, let's start off with designing skills to design a motor or an installation or a building or a structure. You need to then also build that uh, design that you made, you need to maintain and you need to do repairs in the event of failure. Mm. Nothing lasts forever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, having said that, knowing all the skills for an electrician, that's where basic hand skills comes in. Because hand skills is very, very important when it comes to your trade. You need to know what to do with your hands. And, <laughs> and it's as easy as it sounds I was like that because say now. I almost thought like myself like you you know you would just assume this but it just shows you the amount of detail in terms of the course. Mm. Correct because what I normally say to my some of my students is that you need to wake up your hands early enough in your trade. You need to train your hands in order to do what you need to do as an electrician. Hand skills also refers to or what we do or in hand skills is we, we train you on use of your hand tools. What type of tools you also need. That is all included in the module of hand, hand wow. skills. See? So we, need, we train you how to use a file, how to use a hacksaw, or how to use your cutting knife, how to use your screwdrivers perfectly and, 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 and efficiently. Because like they say, Use the proper tool mm. for the proper, proper job. job. Proper yeah. job. And that is what we do in yeah, hands. I, I always get told that. <laughs> <laughs> a good advice you should take. It's <laughs> probably more a reflection on, on me, but <laughs> I always get told that. <laughs> and and no. apart from um, why how big an important part does this make up out of the course? Mm. Because this seems foundation almost, this seems fundamental. Yes, but it goes with you all your your whole trade. Oh, okay. Because you're going to use tools for the rest of your training. Ah. And, you, and, and that, that is why we need to ah. give that in the beginning stages so that exactly. it becomes part of your, exactly. your way forward. Look, I'm Remember, just, yeah. hand, hand tools mm. is, is also, hand skills will also teach you to use that tool properly. And then your work that comes out or your, or your, value, your, 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 your quality of work Mm. is top standard. Yeah. Exactly. For instance, uh, just take a, a normal uh, example in life in electrical. Mm. When making a joint, a cable joint, okay. you need to know how to use that knife properly because you mm. can cause damage to that cable, which is not, which won't surface now immediately. But after a couple of years, ah. while that cable has been uh, carrying that current and deteriorating oh, because yeah. of the environment, that slight damage that you made because you didn't use your knife properly causes a bigger problem oh, wow. and it's very expensive afterwards. Oh, wow. uh, that's where it comes in. Okay. Hand me, skills. I was going to say, skills. this is almost like, you know what, critical because even before you actually go anywhere else, you need to actually first do that because I can just imagine having you take the wrong tool for screwdriver because I mean, if I look at the box of screwdrivers sometimes and I see all these heads and I'm using the wrong one in the, the wrong screw, obviously I could then damage the screw or damage even my tool at the end of the day. So, Good. yeah, it uh, makes sense, makes very, it makes a lot of sense. You're also <laughs> endangering yourself exactly. and your fellow oh, wow. I, was, I was gonna ask you that. I mean, uh, if, if you don't use the proper tool for the proper job. I mean, you you run the risk. You run the risk of, of injury, causing some damage, Correct. not to yourself, but property and all of that. Correct, hundred percent, and that also uh, links directly up to the 
to, 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 to safety in the workplace. Yeah, yeah. No, this, is, this, this is quite fascinating. So uh, it, it, it's just brilliant. That, any, any final thoughts on this? Because this is something that, that the students will be part of from day one. And it is something that, of course, with, like you said, it is mm. with you the whole train. The whole train. So basically, the thing is that you, you apply yourself and do the best that you can. And um, also, for, 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 for prospective students out there, that we do need skilled artisans oh, yeah. in our country. And there will always be a demand for, for skilled yeah. artisans. It's very important. So if you have the desire, go for that. And if you made up your mind, stick to it. That's yeah. it. The best <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Farid, thank you so much thank uh, for, thank you. for, for thank coming you. to chat to us. Farid, uh, and there you had it, hand skills. And it is something that is super important, of course, something that will be with you throughout the time that you are here and uh, something you would make use of uh, all the time, which is, uh, which is absolutely brilliant. But uh, we are going to move on uh, with our next uh, guest as well. And uh, I promise you, we're getting all the meats on the bow now. And uh, this is what I love about the Link Show, because I know people are thinking, OK, I'm really interested in this course. I'm really interested in this campus. But uh, what else? Available. Well, now you've heard something about hand skills as well. But it doesn't end there because uh, we're going to move on now because we're staying on things in terms of electrical. And uh, Cecilia Conce is uh, joining us next. She's here. Hello. Yes. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And how are you? No, very well, very well. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. We're all good. We, we, we just, we're just blown away how everything is just absolutely amazing here mm. and all of this. So. You're on the electrical side of things, and I know this, phase one, right? <laughs> That's correct. Here we go. Tell the people exactly what it is, because uh, Mr. Klenschmidt touched on touched it a on little it. bit earlier. So basically, I am the phase one facilitator. You can take it as the foundation, basically. This is okay. where I take on people that have never dealt with electricity. Oh, wow. So I have to like engage with them as well as be patient, being patient with them uh, when, it, when I'm teaching them. Because we start off with safety. Uh -huh. We don't come to the workshop like immediately because <laughs> we have to <laughs> equip them basically with the knowledge of what to expect in the workshop, what are the risk factors, what to look out for as well, and designing their own circuits as on the background, as you can see there, mm. some of our students, yeah. they're busy wiring. But before they do the wiring, they have to design that as well. Okay. So there's a lot that goes uh, into this. I Also, on my part, I have to be very patient. It's more yeah. like the great art, basically. <laughs> 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 so, I was going to so, say, I was going to say, Naz, basically, the, if it's coming, somebody's coming from school, obviously, this is the yes. first time they're being exposed to this. They've never done it. Maybe just change your plug at home and maybe they had that right, the mm -hmm. brown and the blue and the green. I know there's a whole lot of things there. But this is obviously the first time they're actually really being exposed to, you know, all these colors and codes. That's and correct. That's correct. And the most important thing that I normally do with my students, because I can't just teach them without yeah. having the proper tools, yeah, exactly. of which in our case, we're using the regulation book or the SENSE um, 101 yeah. for two, of which I also need to implement. Because I can't just tell them, your live wire it needs to be red. Okay. Where do I get that from? Exactly. Right. So I also provide them with reading the regulation book. Mm. If they have any questions, I normally tell them, don't trust anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you mustn't trust anyone. You have to go through the regulation book, exactly. basically, the book. in order for you. Yes. yes. That is more like our guide <laughs> in this yeah. world. So what are we looking at here? Because the, the, the room we're in, and we can see it on the, on the, on the video as well, people who are watching this, they, they can see it. What is that? Is that now just a board being built and uh, doing all the wiring things different? Because I looked at it and yeah. I, I couldn't make out what was happening there. <laughs> so, so. so, All right. That is a panel that consists of different components on it, like your circuit breakers, uh, relays, as well as contactors. But before they go to the board, I need to explain each and every component, what is its function, how does it work, and also trying to also assist them 
with designing their own circuits because they need to draw down the circuits before they can even wire. They need to come to me. Mm. Sure. And I need to inspect if it is correct or not. But they've been doing quite well and I'm really proud of my students yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> they also, you can see the passion. You can see that yeah. in them. I was just going to say, it obviously takes quite somebody to actually go into that field and say, I want to do this, you know, yes. there must be a passion, obviously. That's correct. Yeah. That's I, I, correct. And I'll be honest, I won't be one of the students that will because I'm very scared of electricity. So I take my hats <laughs> off to everybody else that actually does this, you know, well done. Basically, those uh, are the, like you, one of the students yes. that I'm looking for. All those people that say, I am scared. <laughs> take her, take you her. There we go. You can't be scared of something that you've never tried exactly. before. Yeah. Exactly. that's something that I normally like uh, emphasize with my students as well if you have any problems come to me i will mm. assist you i will guide you but i won't give you the answer you need to think <laughs> there we go out of the box. <laughs> problem solving that way it starts as well but you know what it, it, it is brilliant to, to know that this is where it all starts this this is the sort of phase one as you said the fundamental phase the fundamental. where it starts and it, it covers so much and mm. from here of course you just move on to, to bigger and greater things. Zizhle, thank you so much yeah. for, for coming to the Link Show and oh, thank you. you so much for being with us. Thank Absolute you. pleasure talking yeah, to you, you as well. Thank you, oh, thank you very much. Zizhle <laughs> God's here then, of course, uh, doing all of that right here at uh, the Belhar campus. And we've got lots of guests that we're going to talk to. We, we're getting the meat on the bones. And uh, the gentleman right next to me is uh, having a seat right now. Hello, sir. How are you? Doing? How are you? What is your name? I'm Mr. Brad Jones. How are you? Thank you, sir. No, liquor, 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 yes. liquor, liquor. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant to talk to you as well, because uh, we've, we've been covering so much now today. What is it that you do here exactly? Well, um, I'm the phase two lecturer responsible for the motor control mm -hmm. and construction in the workshop. So motor basically, control. when they, when once they done with the first one, yes. the first one. You they, the next, they, 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 they come over yes. to you. Oh, wow. So now we get a bit more advanced. Also. Okay. So in the motor control process is basically whereby we control the limitations and the output that a specific motor can give depending on the application needed. Okay. So if I was to move a heavy piece of metal from one point to another, I would articulate and process my motor control system to allow that process to be achieved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So in, uh, sorry to go, in my little world, everybody else say, what would we use this for? Like a good example for well, the people out there? there are many applications. If you think about cranes lifting heavy equipment from one side of the field to the other side on the site. Ah. If you think about the manufacturing process whereby the conveyor belt moves a, a certain product from one point to the next development process, um, cars, aeroplanes, wow. the, the applications are quite used very broadly in today's world. Yeah, and and between this and phase one, I mean, this is a big component of the course, a component of the course. Yes, we all, every, every point of the process has its own importance. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the, in, in the spectrum of the motor control, it just makes everyone's life so much easier. Mm. Whereby I have to go physically do the work, mm. I can I can process the motor to do that for me. Yeah, making my life easier. At yeah, the end of the day. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, back in the day, this was this was the the cutting edge yeah. of, of everything. Yeah. Imagine climbing a hundred steps, and nowadays we can just go into an elevator and exactly. push one button and we go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anything else you can tell us about this, Bradley? Um. What I can say is that from what we do here at Northlink, it's just, I just feel it's important that we have such nice driven students and we mm. have good teamwork that at the end of the day makes it possible for us to give the best outcome mm. so that we are basically sending our students out as ambassadors of Northlink College and they're showing the skills thereby keeping us current in today's mm. world. Yeah, certainly. And, I, and I think that's the most important part for me. No, and certainly. Yeah, and thank you. Listen, it was really good touching base with you because we want to put a face to what, what exactly. students would be going through, which is super, super important. Yeah. So thank you for your time and thanks thank for coming on to the link show, man. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. Bradley Jones, everybody. So that will be then phase two of what you're doing. So you would so we'll start off with what Cynthia was uh, describing initially with a sort of phase one and then moving on there and then uh, motor skills. Now, of course, all of this, or motor control rather, now all of this, there's one very important part. Now, you, we've heard the word 
electrical the whole time, but electronics. Yes. And I want to ask Rhoda, is there a difference? Ah. Well, Ooh. you don't have to answer because Francois has just said down. He, he, he knows all of this. <laughs> yes. Firstly, electronics, electrical, different, right? Yes. See, Very one good. point for well my team. Done, so well there we done. go. So what, what is electronics? Mm. Well, basically electronics is just components wired together, uh, controlling electrons to perform a specific task. For example, here in phase three CBMT, we use electronic components called PLCs to automate our electrical circuits. Okay. Whoa. What are the abbreviations there? <laughs> <laughs> this is why I throw it to you, Rhoda. Right? <laughs> I was just going to say, in actual fact, when it comes down to the little remote control, I use to open the motor gate. Yeah, you yep. see? I've got that one. So you and Bradley basically would work one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. You'll do the gadget for him to be able to work the remote. Yeah, ah. that's actually a combination of electronics and electrical. There we go. Mm. See? Yeah, the remote is electronics and the gate motor is electrical. Ah, okay, ah. okay, okay. One for me. Now, <laughs> Let, let's ask you this, because this is the important thing. I mean, this is certainly something that covers so much in today's life. Mm. Basically everything. So I'm just thinking, as a prospective student, what possible sector could I step in once I leave here? Well, pretty much any manufacturing uh, that you can think of. Agriculture, food production, automotive production. So um, the main thing that we focus on here, on the heavy current electrical, is actually at the end we're doing automation so we are using like i said before plc which is a programmable logic controller here we go okay i knew that yeah <laughs> <laughs> we use that to to automate all our electrical circuits in other words we tell the circuit what to do on its own and it does it on its own okay wait 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 mm. i'm glad you said that yeah, and that is what all the manufacturing companies use these days. Um, they have robot hands being controlled mm -hmm. by these oh, controllers. Wow. And they just put all the components together. You still have people on the assembly lines uh, doing all the little smaller things that the robots cannot do. Yeah, yeah. I so, must say, sorry, Dougal, electronics is, for me has become part of our lives because, I mean, if I look at today's way everything is moving and the way uh, we're heading and this mm. revolution as well, electronics, I feel, is one of our big, definitely one of our no, bigger ones. Everything is electronics. I was just going to say, yeah, yeah. sure. Sorry, Dougal. And, 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 this is, and, this is, and this is the big part where, 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 where things are growing. Yes. Mm, I was going to yes. say. And, and now, so after people have done the sort of first phase, they've, they've gone through the mode, this, is this the last part? Yes, uh, oh, wow. so when they reach phase three, we start off um, expanding the, the motor control circuits they did in phase two. Okay. Uh, so we uh, complete that, but that's only a, thir the, a third of the entire course. Then we move over to electronics and automation. Okay. So in electronics, they start off very basic, they uh, learn how to build some circuits, learn how to identify the different components, because it's one thing to learn it in theory, it's quite a different thing mm. to mm. see the actual components. Yeah. Once we're done with that, then we get to automation. Okay. And automation is nowadays, as we're moving into fourth industrial revolution, the most important thing oh, within wow. the electrical industry. If you now go and you can just look for any job in electrical. PLCs will be either a recommendation or a requirement. Wow. Ah. That's and, that is, and that is why it is absolutely cardinal. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anything else you would like to add to that, Francois? Uh, yes, just very quickly. Um, it's not just PLCs. We have expanded the automation course quite a bit. Okay. Um, we are also teaching the students how to program human machine interfaces so for you who don't know it's a little <laughs> screen a touch screen okay which communicates with the controller so that you as an operator can make changes on the machine so oh, wow. it's a little touch screen that they program we also now have simulation software where you can have on your computer you can build a physical factory you can program that programmable logic controller send it to your panel where your physical PLC is yeah. and that PLC will then come back and control that factory on your computer. Wow. Oh wow. Brilliant. Oh wow. So basically everything we use in everyday life and going Electronics. forward making life easy is, 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 is what's covered. Yes. Yeah.
people. Oh, wow. Next one. I'm stumped. <laughs> thank you. Stunned. But listen, thank you so much, Francois. Thank it's you very much thank for you, taking thank the time you. to sit down with us. Absolutely brilliant to talk to you. And uh, thanks for, for highlighting <laughs> that. Because I'm, I'm really stunned right now because these are the sort of things we, we need exactly. on a daily basis. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. That, that is Francois Pinar. Uh, yep, Francois Pinar, that's his name that has yeah. just joined us. Uh, you're on the link show as well and we're going to move on because we've got quite a bit of guests that we want exactly. to go through we're just getting you a little taste bit taste of, 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 of what what is to, to to happen here and what what you can expect so we've covered a lot of things within electrical and we're still going to get to some of the other facets as well but hello sir how are ah. you what is I'm your right, name I'm right. my name is Ibrahim Brenner Brenner how are you I, I'm quite fine how are you guys doing no we're, we're good. good we're good <laughs> we're good uh, we're talking about something and I'm trying to spot it if I even see see it on you but it's not here because I was just we, say, we, we, we're talking painting exactly <laughs> and you're so clean there's yeah. no paint on you well not really that clean <laughs> <laughs> but you can't see it <laughs> paint is never clean that is, that is a promise I can make you <laughs> and, and this is something that is discovered within the, 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 the civil side of, of, yeah. of, 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 of learning well, look where painting is concerned um, what do we do here at Northing mm. is basically teach the student from the get-go. Like somebody comes out never been painting, we have a department here where I teach them the hand skills required for there it. There we go. With the cutting in. Mm -hmm. We do not teach people to mask, you know, yeah, your yeah, skirtings yeah. and your window frames. No, we do not teach them to do that. We <laughs> teach them to use a brush properly, how to cut in, okay. the different ways of rolling, because by there is a specific way to use a roller, not just up and down. And, you know, everything gets taught, the basics to the, the final product. Yeah. yeah. And how long, how long are we talking here? Well, our courses run anywhere between a week to 12 weeks. Oh, right? Wow. So it depends on whoever wants to come. We get the top up, you know, people that just knows about painting but uh, still needs a few touch ups here and there and yeah. then come to us. Yeah. We accommodate for everyone. And then I just want to find out because, I mean, I love, I paint myself. So what type of painting you got to use different, obviously? Well, we yeah. do water-based paints, yeah. oil-based paints. Oh, wow. And uh, even now the college has acquired um, spray. Oh. Uh, so uh, uh, hopefully we're going to implement that soon, mm -hmm. where we teach you how to spray the walls because our industry is always changing. Oh, yeah. I was just All right, so it's not just about painting the walls and, you know, with a brush and a roller. Nowadays people are starting to spray. So we have our equipment already, so we need to go with that one also. And I'm time. glad you're touching on this, because the one thing that is definitely coming out with everybody we've spoken to is the fact how progressive things oh, are and yeah. always innovative. Yeah, industry is always changing out there, and we need to keep up with that change. Yeah. Because I imagine we keep doing things the old way, and now the student goes out there, he doesn't know about the new stuff that's happening out there, exactly. and that is why we need to keep up with industry. I was just gonna say and that, that is what we do. Mm. Now let me ask you this because it's a bit of a naughty question and it is a bit no of a problem. left field, left field <laughs> question. Where would I find employment? Going forward, is there still a demand for employment within the painting industry? Let me put it to you this way. What makes a place look beautiful? Mm. Oh, I can mm. build, I can plaster, I can do everything else. But the main thing that makes my place look beautiful is painting. So out there, there's always need for painters. You see, uh, I always. like it. Yeah. Okay, you've answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> so are they basically, when they come for the training, because you know, I'm always, the layman out, always think just house painting. Is there other painting as well within the industry, just not like in the housing No, side? no, look, we do uh, building, construction, you know, when you're picking up a building, you need to paint the building as well. So yeah, we aligned in every, in, in every situation that I teach them. Okay. All right, we get your metal works, you get, uh, mm, look, even, even, you. even if you look at the metal work or so, mm. all right, what do you put on there? Because it needs to rust. Exactly. You know, it's going to thin, if, what, what is the way to do? Yeah. Yeah. Rust. So, even with the metal stuff, sorry, structures, structures, you need to uh, pro, you know, provide the paint on there, which basically your base will be your, your primer for mm. your finishing cones. Yeah. Because right, you must teach them that. Even in my, my workshop, it's not just practical. I will put them down, I have a whiteboard, in my office so before they start anything we will teach them what's the process the mm. starting to the end so what is the primer that's going to be used what is the undercoat what is the finish coat right? and which way you know going forward yeah that's how we teach them in the class yeah, it's okay. not just 
going and doing the thing. Yeah. We need to have the theater well as well. So I'm gonna ask you, you haven't, yeah, you, cause you got, yeah, you said we can't see the spray. You've been using the spray thing, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, not yet. Right? Not yet. But because of my years of experience, I'm not going to be full of pain. <laughs> but if you go to my students, you'll see how they look. <laughs> oh, thank you, Brenda. Mr. Brenda, thank you so much thank for your time. Pleasure. Absolutely, thank you for right. your time. All the <laughs> but I love really, everybody. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. Just touching base on pain. As simple as that. And yes, he has said it. This is definitely an industry that will always be in demand. And especially when you're going to decide to study. And it covers so much when it comes to building in terms of civil engineering. But there's still a couple of things we want to touch base on. And we are going to get to it, but we're going to move straight on to something which is, for me, a bit of a, a hot topic. Because Andrea Snyder has just joined us. And we're talking solar. <laughs> yes. We're talking PVC. There we go. All, oh, yeah. all of these things. Exciting, exciting topics because you're not a stranger to the Link Show. We spoke yes. to you a while yeah, ago. And welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> welcome back to you as well. And then, and then quickly, PVC, solar energy, give us the overview. This, this happens here? Of course, yeah. of course. Look, you get two types of solar. When people think of solar, they maybe think of the, the geyser on the roof. That is, that is solar thermal. That okay. is the heating of water. And we actually do solar thermal as well as solar PV. PV standing for photovoltaic. Yeah. So uh, uh, solar thermal is the heating of water, which is very important nowadays. Mm -hmm. And then of course you also get solar uh, uh, PV, which is the generation of electricity. And with ESCOM pushing up their tariffs and you have all these load shedding happening in the country, oh. people are continuously looking at ways of going both ways, going the solar thermal way of heating up the water and saving, up, uh, saving some electricity in that way. Uh, because about 40% or up to 50% of your electricity bill goes towards heating up the geyser. Yeah. Mm. And then also going towards solar PV because of the load shedding, people are working from home. They need electricity at home for yeah. the, uh, 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 you know, to, to run their routers and their computers and, uh, and also televisions. So people are actually looking at both uh, 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 types of solar uh, uh, as an option. And we offer both of those courses at Northland College on this campus. Oh, wow. wow. I tell you what, this is, this, this is innovative because uh, if you were thinking of like meeting industry demand <laughs> and our course is created, here's the proof in the pudding. That's exactly. And especially going forward. Of course, yeah. of course. And yeah. I think especially for uh, entrepreneurs, I'm looking at this now, just giving them a school because this is our future, this is what we need at all of our houses. Yeah, I, I think a lot of industries, you know, especially our factories are starting to look at how can we generate power because now you have a downtime because of load shedding, exactly. the factory stands uh, still. So people are looking at, uh, factories are definitely looking at how can we generate power by using so solar PV. Mm. And this is where our learners come to the play because they've been trained to do the installation of these panels. Mm. And uh, there would be a, a quite a large demand uh, in South Africa, I think in Africa for that matter, oh, where yes. uh, people are starting to install uh, solar PV. In your hospitality industry, your hotels are, are, are definitely going that route. And a lot of the hotels are saying, look, let's go for the solar PV method of eating, of generating power so that our guests can be comfortable. Mm. Because, at the, you know, if, if you look at, you, you're also comp comparing yourself against other hotels. If they have it and you don't have it, customers flock to where it's better suited for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. And getting better buck for, the, for, for, for what they spend, I was you know. Say yeah. Yeah. Better exactly. buck for the bank. And, yeah. and when it comes to the, the sort of, you know, electricity providers and all of that, I mean, the renewables are such a buzzword in, in terms of all of that. Now, in the last while, I mean, is the, uh, that sector and the demand for, for tuition in, in, with those courses, has that spiked quite a bit? It has spiked. What mm. we've done is, uh, to make it also affordable for the learners, uh, we are offering the solar PV course as an add-on to our electrical course at the moment. Oh, wow. So if they're in the same workshop where we are now, once the, the learners have completed the, the phases or the CBMT training, mm -hmm. as, as well as the new uh, center specialization, we are adding on the solar PV as an added course, free of charge at the moment, to them so that they can be exposed to this technology, because that is definitely demand out there. Yeah. Mm. And to add to this, you know, uh, also petrol prices have spiked, and this is causing people to look at uh, electric vehicles. And of course, electric vehicles must be charged. So a lot of people are doing this now at their homes where they have an electric vehicle. They, instead of having a carport, they would put up solar PV panels to form the carport. Oh, wow. So when you get a, a two, two at home uh, for the few daylight hours that is still available, you can then plug in your car and, and charge up your, 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 your vehicle. The next morning, you can then drive to, to work almost for free. Ah. 
<laughs> so you know, you if you think about it, <laughs> so uh, of course the cars, the car manufacturers are continuously being innovative. So what they're doing is you have almost like a replacement battery. So during the day while you're not there, you are charging up the replacement battery. So if you do come at home at night, let's say your schedule only allows you to come home at night, there's already a battery that is charged via the sunlight, which is free, you know, we don't pay for the sun coming out every day. You take out the fully charged battery, you put it into your car, so you're ready to go. And with the cars nowadays, you can maybe ride 180 kilometers on one charge. Wow. You put in the, ch the, 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 the battery that must still be charged, and that can be charged the next day while you're at work. Mm. It so all sounds very, that. yeah, and, and this is the way I think we are also going to to save the planet because we're mm. not using fossil fuels anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely something for the so future. It's definitely a well, it's needless to, to ask you, do you think there'll be a need of demand of employment or where <laughs> the world is going? Because That's it is certainly, as you said, it, yes. that is exactly, exactly where it is going. But just yeah. to be clear, with, with, when it comes to solar PV, this is added. So basically, mm. a student that comes here yes. is getting two birds, one stone. Yes, yes. So yeah. we, 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 we offer that course. We also offer a standalone course where if somebody from outside wants to come and do the course, we can also do that. Okay. The, the course takes about two weeks, and we can then train the person. But th that is now somebody that is already been trained in electrical. The, the course would take two weeks. Ah, you okay. see, there's also a lot of uh, additional information needed to, to, to be able to do the, the, the PV installation. You know, when you, when you measure the voltage of a, a panel, you could get 36 volts. And if you touch it with your bare hands, you won't shock. When you connect two of them in series, you now have 72 volts. You will definitely shock. <laughs> if you have four, you will probably die if you touch the panel, the wires. So there's dangers involved, and we need to be aware of all the dangers. And that is why we train the students that already have the electrical background just to do the solar uh, wow. installation course as an add-on. Because they already Brilliant. know about safety. They know about the dangers exactly. of the high voltages uh, and so on. Uh, exactly. Oh, absolutely brilliant. This is Thank you so much. Thank you, thank no, no. Thank thank you so yes. much for, for coming on. Any final things that you would like to add? I, I think the solar in general is something for the future. You know, the city of Cape Town is starting to install mm. 20,000 solar panels uh, uh, here in the Western Cape also to, to uh, limit the load shedding in the, in the province. And I think there's a huge demand for, for students to, uh, to be employed in this industry. So I think students need, really need to think about going, exactly. doing, going into that uh, uh, training for the future because mm. it's definitely something as a, a training that will be valuable yeah. uh, for employment wise for, for them for the future definitely yeah. uh, absolutely thank you so much for, for no, coming on to the show and a really nice touching <laughs> base with you as well thank you very much thank, thank, you. thank you thank you sir so there you have it this is definitely something we all know the world is constantly changing but it's a common theme that you've heard here on the link show today because uh, industry what is happening in the sectors out there in terms of employment and now industries with technologies have advanced it is it's very important for tertiary institutions to keep up with that so they offer you those courses mm. so you can definitely find suitable employment but that there at least is a demand for it and this is definitely the common theme that we're hearing uh, today but we're moving on because Shamil just, just joined us how are you good afternoon are you well Mr. Lis. Oh, Mr. Oh, Lis, yes, sorry, yes, sorry, Mr. sorry, 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 yes. I'm, 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 yeah, Skip Vance has joined us, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm yeah. on, on, on ah. the different thing, because we're skipping now, we're going through to carpentry and joinery. Yes. That's yes, right. Yes. yes. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Welcome to <laughs> Grossing Bella, <laughs> and also welcome to our viewers. No, oh, there we go. It's really nice having you here, it's really nice having you here, but now quickly talk as to, because people would want to know what is the difference now between a carpenter and a joiner. And a joiner, yeah. okay. Please. So many, many times we have this misconception when students come in. They don't really know what it is. Mm. And I've made ourselves something. I don't know if the camera can, can see, see it. No, but it's but called you can explain wood, to us. wood workers. Okay. Uh, and then wood woodworking gets, gets then split it into bit. two. Okay. Where we get the carpentry and then the joinery. Mm. And then carpentry gets split into two again. Okay. Where it's the wet works and then the dry works. If we think about wet works, we're working with wet, wetness, with mm. mortar. Okay. How does ah. it come in? You will see these days, the buildings go up very, very fast. Yeah. They don't mm. use the bricks anymore. They yeah. will cast something. So in order to cast, you will have to need, if we think of a bowl of jelly, uh. when we were so small, <laughs> we needed to throw that jelly into a mold. Yeah. so that it can take that form and set. Yeah. This is exactly the same when we cast. 
if you cast the staircases, if you cast the walls that's going on, mm. you will need the mold. So yeah. that mold is called form work. Uh -huh. So that is one of the main stuff that the carpenters uh -huh. does. They do the form work. Okay. Then a carpenter, they also build the roof trusses to put on the roofs. Yeah. That's all where the outside work is concerned. If you come inside, if you think about carpenters, they also hang doors. They will do skirtings, mm. they will do wall paneling. Mm. They will even do ceilings, yeah. even the boarded ceilings. Yeah. So that is where the carpentry, carpentry. is. Yeah. And then there's joiners. Mm. Now I'm going to sound a bit biased. Ah. <laughs> because I'm a joiner. <laughs> You're a joiner. You so sounded very much like I a I always thought joiner. Because a joiner just sounds like a really exciting thing. It's kind of a, you know a what joiner. I mean? Somebody who mixes and gets everybody Connected. together. <laughs> yes, we, and certainly we do. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly we do. So in the joinery, that is where we actually, from raw material, create stuff. So in order for the carpenter to put in the door, we actually make the door for them. Oh, there yes. we go. I also want to latch on That's on Friday okay. when our CEO spoke. He mentioned and a lot of times people look down on people with overalls. And we are not treated the same. And that is really a misconception. Because we in overalls, yeah, we are very, very important. You're important. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Just look at a doctor. That bed that he sleeps in, that is a joiner that builds that bed. <laughs> the lawyer that's there, the bookcase. Exactly. Joiners does that. <laughs> Even from the baby that, the cot. Yeah. A joiner builds the cot. Sadly to say, if you die, the coffin. <laughs> we also build that. <laughs> so can I say, as a joiner, we, <laughs> we are in your life. The end. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but <laughs> it certainly is. Well um, I don't even want to ask you what you're building there, but <laughs> you're definitely manufacturing okay, something. Um, <laughs> there, um, I'm busy on the mortise machine, and that is to do the various types of joints. Mm. At that particular junction, I'm busy with a cupboard, a, oh, a door cupboard. Okay. For, for a cupboard. All right. Oh, wow. So now, obviously, because when it comes to carpentry and joinery, mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of work, um, there's always going to be a demand. Yes. But, but, but there's something else that, that, that draws me into this, why this is exciting. It's because this is really something where people who are creative, That's they good. flourish. Mm. That's good. Because you're working with your hands, Mm. and you're really creating something exactly. from raw material and you are there seeing how it develops. develops and to be honest that is really really priceless i'm just gonna say very priceless yeah. <laughs> oh that is exciting oh, i love your how, passion how, <laughs> <laughs> how, um, have students uh, made any items to order just just to put it have a litmus test on this have, have students ever made anything that, that would go on into a market yes at the moment we had the safi group it is the south african furniture initiative yeah we initially the students came in Yes, I will hold that yes. for you. I, I, I like oh, to use that and I want to you go. So they came in uh, just uh, in conjunction with CEDA, where the, they were going to be helped with finance. Yeah. And Northlink had to just upskill them a little bit. However, Northlink even went a step further, mm. not just with upskilling, but actually taking them to a trade test. And that is the highest that a person can go. Oh, wow. And I can proudly say, that four of the students have just been trade tested over this two two weeks. So wow. and they have coming back to your question, do they have stuff to, to sell? Yes. Wow. They actually do make um, and <laughs> once again there's a whole lot of stuff, being it from beds, being it from tables, chairs. Mm. I just looked um, at all of that pictures, yeah. Yes, uh, there yeah. you can see. Um, and the cockpits. Oh, it is. Yeah, um, that <laughs> it is. The crib. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is for the for the smaller ones. And then also, I'd really like to say, um, the SANDF was also mentioned. Mm. Yeah. So currently we have a group of 30 of them being here. Uh, okay. Wow. At Northlink BLR. 
So, so why did they all come to North Lingbiel Hall? North Lingbiel Hall is the only college in the Western Cape that is accredited to do joinery trade tests. Oh, wow, well done. Oh, wow. And I can actually say a little bit further. Go ahead. Go yes, ahead. a little bit further than only the Western Cape. Wow. Because why I say college, there are other institutions that popped up that also do it. But I can certainly say the only college that do it. And the SANDF, they come from across South Africa. Mm. So we've got 30 students that's busy here across South Africa well in North Link Wow, wow. Well, the reason people Listen, be here. I'm, I'm just going to ask you if there's any closing <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> uh, viewers, North Link is the college to be. Oh, yeah. As we not only do the basics, we come back to the basics, but we also move forward with the basics. Mm. It's unfortunate that, yeah, we are in different stages. We're not going to mention the names <laughs> of the companies. <laughs> but even um, we can work even when there is load shedding. Oh, wow. Yeah. There we go. Because joinery is not just about the machines. That's right. yeah. We actually s teach the students to do handwork. <laughs> I, I don't know if they caught it last week, but... You even start with small blocks. Yeah. And you've got your chisel and you've got your hand saw and you first back master to that. Yes. Mm. Uh, Rhoda? Mm -hmm. Not back to the basics. Not back to the basics, but moving forward with the basics. That's so right. that is Bialar. Yeah. yeah. No, listen, it is and, and, and you're quite passionate and, and the, which is which is brilliant, <laughs> which is absolutely fantastic. It is just Wonderful, wonderful. And, and with all of that, of course, this is something that is always going to be needed. And then most importantly, it makes a student employable, which is what it's all about. Yes. Because yeah. straight test is, is the highest qualification for an artisan. For artisan, yeah, And exactly. really, um, one prep student that I have back, his plans is to go to New Zealand. Oh, wow. So after this, they are looking for South Africans that has the skill. Oh, yeah. wow. And... So Northling's got it. Yes, Northling's got it. And even with the DHET, because there's this new slogan where it's, it says it's cool to be a 21st century artisan. Oh, it certainly there is. There we go. And it is. And this is the people who build, who build the world. Like, exactly. No mistake about that. And, 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 well, that's the way forward. It is. Yes. Mr. Les, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks it for was coming exciting. on, man. Yeah, absolute <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> no, absolute pleasure talking to you. Don't go too pleasure. far. I'm going to talk to you more. <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it. I mean, you're getting all that passion, but more importantly, it's a, it's a great overview in terms of uh, what we have here at uh, the Belhar campus in terms of it. Now, I mentioned to you there was one thing that I was looking forward to. Well, there was two. We've covered the one in terms of solar PV and all of that. But then obviously the heart of everything is then plumbing. And this is something that is super, super important. And Lauren has just joined us, who's also a facilitator, lecturer of this. Thank you for coming on to The Link Show. How are you doing? You're welcome. Good afternoon. I'm very well, thank you. Lekker. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> I want to get straight into it. What is plumbing all about? Very simply put. It is the transportation of water from one point to another. <laughs> ayo, ayo, ayo. Which is the essence of life. Yes. Exactly. It is probably the most important thing in, in this structure. Yes, it is. It's essentially, if you think about it, it is the transportation of water from one point to another. Mm. Think of anything in plumbing that doesn't have water. Mm. Mm. It comes from storage tanks, it has piping systems, so it's the transportation. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens in the course here with plumbing? I mean, what do you cover? You cover every single aspect of plumbing. Yes. So we also start with our training students. Some of them know absolutely nothing about plumbing. And I think that's what makes it more fruitful. If someone comes in and they don't even know what a water pump layers is. <laughs> so yes, we also start at the basics with our plumbing students. They um, are then taught how to use tools, safety, and um, taught how to read plans also. Mm. Because as you know, we work with levels and heights and things like that. So we teach them all of that. Once they are ready and they are trained, then they can then go further to do their trade test. Ah, okay. simple as that. And yes. and Sounds to, Yeah, and just obviously in the course, you're now giving these um, for the, in this program, what did some students find challenging in the program? 
to be very honest, I think um, they also find it challenging that I am a female oh, facilitator. Wow. So um, I, I do think that that is one of our students' biggest, biggest challenges challenge. because they are not used to being instructed by a female in this industry. In this industry. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. but we get over it. We learn to know one another yeah. and we work well together. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just going to say now because really sorry, Dougal. I know you got a question there. I, and in the industry, I mean, if I call out a plumber, it's always, I'm sorry, it's always been a man. So I'm just happy, you know, that we are hitting this industry. And you know what? It's about time. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and in terms of the student makeup, are there a lot more female students? No. In? Unfortunately not, but it is growing. It is growing. There Ladies. are more females interested and more females coming now. Excellent. Yeah. So, yes. Now, in terms of where the technology lies within plumbing, because in my mind, it was always just a copper thing. Has this now changed? Is it moving on? Um, most of our newer buildings are, we don't really use copper, as you know, it's a, it's a yeah. risk. It's a risk yeah. for our own. So, um, <laughs> most of the time we use PEX pipe these days. It's flexible, it's also less expensive than copper, so it makes it easier to work with. Mm. Yeah. Ah, as simple as that. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. And uh, I mean, the, the student population here is constantly growing, and it, it, it is very exciting because everything that you would learn here in this campus, I mean, you could, you could construct anything, Rona. Anything. You could basically mm. do that. Then, yeah. One of the very big, important questions I would like to say: Why is plumbing important? I mean, why? It's important for our sanitation. It's important. Im just imagine. We at home, and you have a leaking waste pipe because plumbing was not done properly mm. or correctly. Think of of our our health exactly. and what is at risk if it's not done properly. Mm. Or for example, if you turn on your shower and you hear this water hammer, you know that loud dush, 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 yeah. pipe sound. I mean, what happens then? It's, it can it can actually cause our households or homes or buildings to not function properly. Yeah, it's a very which is important. the important thing. Now, in terms of this, there, there are students looking at this. Mom and dad mm. are looking at this, thinking, okay, that is a course that 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 definitely stands out. We all know employment opportunities, the entrepreneurial side of things, oh, all yeah. these sort of skills that you would acquire. This will, but this is always something that's going to be in demand. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and I also think it's important that people watching this don't expect lots of money from the start because I get that a lot from my students. Ma'am, am I really not going to earn my 21,000 rand yet? <laughs> the, no, we need to start at the bottom exactly. and we grow and we build ourselves up from the bottom. So that is what makes it most fruitful yeah. and if you really think about plumbing is always important it's something that you need all the time from big buildings big companies big corporations yeah. to your house everywhere. It, everywhere it is everywhere i mean we all plumbed on it <laughs> so it is as simple as that but but it is exactly like you say in anything you do any tree starts off from very small, small. and then it goes big 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 and eventually provides shade and mm. coverage yes. for so much so uh, that is it thank mm. you so much Lord. you're thank welcome you. absolutely thank you <laughs> <laughs> that, you know what, that is where we're going to leave it. We, we, we've, we've covered all our guests. We've Dogo. covered all our guests, Dogo. and that was quite a bit of information. But you know what, it just all comes down to the fact that, you know what, this trade is basically needed out there. It is something that, you know what, parents, you need to look at our youth out there. It's something that you need to look at. And Northern College is what has come through to me, their safety, and you know what, they're the world first. So. I'm sorry, they ticked all the boxes for me. No, they ticked all the boxes. You're absolutely right. And, and, and there's so much. And uh, of course, all the information that you would require, oh, you yeah. can simply visit the website at northing.co.za. All the details will be on there in terms of when it comes to applying for funding, you know, for exactly. birth leads. You, you can do that in terms of the dates that you would require, specifically through the Belha campus, because it's the right. second one that we visited. There yes. is an energy here. <laughs> there's, a, there's a creative <laughs> energy here. There, you, you can feel it. The people who are going to be one day constructing society, and uh, literally and figuratively, I mean that, will be constructing Definitely. society. So everything you're learning here, from 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 building to to the electrical side of things, to to the plumbing where it ends up, to the joinery, mm -hmm. the carpentry, painting, and all of that. And more importantly, what I like about Northing, which to me is really the catalyst in the argument, and this is why I would advance that argument yeah. that this is going to be your tertiary institution of, of choice, choice, is that constant 
um, I don't want to say negotiation, but constant insta action mm. with what is happening in the sectors exactly. in question. In question. Because that is dictating to what the courses will be. Exactly. And these things get tailored. So it is bespoke to the road. It's yes. at the time and it is at the moment. It's happening I now. mean, right now already sold the PV. That that's all happening. That's all it, happening. There's all the stuff exactly. that's happening in electronics. I mean exactly. Exactly. And it's not that it's old or old work that you're being, it's really what's happening in our future now. Electronics, what's happening now, mm. it's, it's booming, you know, and with the, um, the what they call it, the fourth revolution? Yeah, fourth uh, industrial yeah. revolution. Industrial revolution, I mean, this is the place to be. This is where it's happening in your face, right here. Uh, it certainly you is. You don't want to be left behind. <laughs> you don't want to be left behind. <laughs> so if you're still contemplating, well, hopefully you're not contemplating much anymore, but you're definitely logging online and you're visiting the website uh, at northwing.co.za to find out all the details, what you had. What I must say, it's been an absolute privilege being here today at the Balor campus. It is definitely a buzz in the air, good energy. But most of all, this is how we wrap it up, Rhoda. This is how we wrap it up. I want to say thank you to all the guests for giving us the insight and sort of really letting Getting you in into what exactly happens on this amazing campus where skills and learning and of course determination and excellence is really the motivation behind everything. So thank you to all our guests for giving us a little bit of time of their busy schedules uh, for being on the link show and thank you to you for watching. So what you got to do is simply visit northing.co.za you get all the details there and then definitely make this tertiary institution of choice. And case in point the link show is exactly that our innovative Northling colleges were giving you all the the information on a silver platter so definitely make full use of it in closing remember to like and share this and join us for our next episode which will be towards the end of uh, november when we will be back with another installment of the link show so from the bell R campus <laughs> thank you so much for watching from rhoda and myself Dugald and all our guests until next time cheers look after yourself bye-bye